Hello, you two. I'd like to compare the baptism narratives in the Synoptic Gospels to see how they differ. And I'd also like to compare a narrative of John the Baptist in prison, which is found only in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. I'd like to start with the baptism narrative in the Gospel of Mark, which is in chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now the prophecy fulfillment in verse 2 I've dealt with in a separate video. There's four things which I'd like to mention from this baptism narrative. Uh, the first is that it may be implied that Jesus was going to be baptized in order for his sins to be forgiven. This is mentioned as the purpose of the baptism in verse 4 and mentioned in verse 5 that everyone else, uh, when they were baptized, they confessed their sins. There's no indication in this passage that Jesus was doing otherwise. The second thing I'd like to point out is that while John is aware of the office of the Messiah who was to come after him, he is not aware that Jesus is the Messiah. There's also no indication in this passage that Jesus is aware of who John the Baptist is and the role which John played as his forerunner. Additionally, uh, the vision of the heavens being torn apart, the spirit descending like a dove, and the voice all happen, are observed by Jesus alone. None of those things are indicated as being public. So, John doesn't know who Jesus was, partly because he didn't observe any of that. Uh, another thing would be that it may also be implied uh, that Jesus was previously unaware of his identity as the Son of God, hence the voice from heaven. You know, it may also be implied or inferred um, that Jesus did not become the Son of God until that moment. You know, this narrative lends itself quite well to an adoptionist interpretation. Now, in the Gospel of Mark, John is executed by Herod Antipas in chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. There's a parallel passage in Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 through 12, and it's relegated to a bit of a footnote in Luke chapter 9, verses 27 through 29. I'd like to compare the baptism narrative in the Gospel of Matthew next. I'm going to read from chapter 13, or chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom 
I am well pleased. So the first thing that stands out in this passage is that Jesus came to be specifically baptized by John. Jesus is aware of John's role. And also, John is aware of Jesus' identity as Messiah. This is why he is reluctant to baptize him. This would seem to be because you're baptized in order for your sins to be forgiven. And at least according to this narrative, Jesus didn't need that to be done. Then that raises the question, why is Jesus being baptized in the first place? So we're then given an explanation. Uh, it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. I'm not exactly sure how that's an explanation, but that's the one which is provided. Uh, next, um, while, while the heavens are opened and uh, the dove appears to Jesus alone, the voice from heaven is public because it, it, it no longer says, you are my son. It says, this is my son. This baptism narrative causes a problem with a later passage in the Gospel of Matthew. This is from chapter 11, verses 2 through 6. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Does John the Baptist have amnesia? Is that why he's forgotten who Jesus was? Or is there another explanation? Um, I'd also like to read a little bit more from chapter 11 of Matthew. In verses 11 through 15, Jesus has this to say about John the Baptist. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John came. And, if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Let anyone with ears listen. The part about him being mentioned as Elijah is important. Next, I'd like to read the baptism and prison narratives from the Gospel of Luke, uh, because I think that they provide a satisfactory explanation for this narrative problem in the Gospel of Matthew. So the baptism narrative I'm going to read is from chapter 3, verses 15 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people, but Herod the ruler who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So the first thing with this passage in Luke is that we may infer that John is aware of the coming Messiah, like in the Gospel of Mark, but he's not aware that Jesus is the Messiah. There's no indication in that, pa in that passage 
Um, also, Jesus is not baptized by John. John is put in prison by Herod first. So, John does not meet Jesus. In addition, you know, the opening of heaven, the descent of the dove, and the voice from heaven now are all made public. It seems that this is superimposed onto the other baptism narratives quite often. Next, uh, from the prison narrative, I'm going to read from chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? When the man had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. So, this question from John the Baptist's disciples now makes sense, because in the narrative of the Gospel of Luke, at that point, John was unaware of who Jesus was, really. He definitely wasn't aware that Jesus was the Messiah, unlike the Gospel of Matthew. So, but what seems to be a reasonable, reasonable explanation here is that while both Matthew and Luke used the baptism narrative from Mark and modified it for their own purposes, they then took the prison narrative from a different source. You know, and it just so happened, you know, that uh, the, the way Matthew arranged uh, the gospel, that it really bungled up and uh, ma made a pretty bad mistake. Um, one more thing um, would be that, you know, the gospel of Matthew refers to John the Baptist as Elijah. You know, it likes to do that. Um, while the Gospel of Luke leaves that out entirely. So, we have three quite different pictures of the baptism narratives, which again present different Jesus characters and present different John the Baptist characters. And I, I really don't see how a, a, a synthesis of these things can be proposed without really torturing the disparate sources.